Alright, so even if you can't beat Needhogger right now, you should start to farm him out because we are of course gonna get some holy relics. Now these holy relics aren't the greatest, they're for really old units and I don't really make the units that much better. So I don't really see a point of actually making these, so it's not a rush to actually craft these yet. But there are a few things you can do to actually start farming out the mats for holy relics. So the first one is to go into the memory of Yggdrasil and you should do the memories of heaven so that you can get uh, as many of these as you possibly can. You should probably do two of these runs a day and uh, that should net you more than enough to actually buy these every single week. And I'm just gonna do that for this week and then you just farm out some more every day and you should have more than enough to sort of start buying these out every single week. Once you've actually started like getting more than 2000, you, you should see these accumulate if you just do the one run. You can sort of start doing the other run or whatever. You can start buying some other things uh, that you might need. I'm pretty low on these. Y usually you're kind of low on one of these. Yeah, this is the one I'm really low on. So this is the one you could then potentially buy. Or if you have some materials from this other one, you can also buy it. Because uh, you do need these triangles for the different holy relics. But with that out of the way, uh, like there is a team that is able to clear floor one consistently very very easily and you will sort of be able to farm out these dark red crystals as well as these uh, sources of roots corruption every single week but of course you do need to pick the dragon boss or the need hugger boss every single week just to get one additional of these uh, corrupt sources and for clearing floor one you will of course also get to another one of these as well as two dark red crystals but there is a 10 percent chance to actually get these crystals uh, by just completing the floor one stage and you can do this indefinitely so you can most definitely stack up on these if you want. I think that's actually a good idea. Since these are the ones I'm mainly missing most of the time on all the other like demonic beasts. So these are really good to like stack up on if you need them. I did this run twice today with this team and I got actually two of these. So the chance feels a lot higher than 10%. But then again, like that could have just have been luck. But anyway, this is the team we're gonna use. This is the patience team with King and Van. And uh, we're also gonna use Freyr here because he's gonna make us uh, sort of immune to the... what's it called? Ignite effects that the boss is gonna be able to apply on the final phase with his ultimate. As well as having the old Valente here just to sort of decrease the enemy's pierce rate by the value of her resistance at the start of battle. Now because her resistance is quite high, you can of course get it up even higher by having like a uh, resistance sub rolls on her gear. My rolls are kind of bad. I could most definitely re-roll this but try to get at least 25% and you should do fine. Like you don't need her holy relic at all. You don't even need Ban's holy relic. You don't need King's holy relic. Like you don't need any holy relics for this and that's what makes this so good. Like King's holy relic of course it helps. It's a new holy relics and if you can complete the like the dogs and stuff like that and you do have this most definitely craft Thonar's relic first uh, if you don't have it but his holy relic is quite Quite nice because it increases the damage he deals by 15% and increases the basic stats of all allies protected by the hero's barrier by 15%. So every single turn you are supposed to like attack with king, get the shield and then do a little bit of extra damage right. And because you do have the shield and uh, with the combination of Ban's passive here, it's the blue brawler Ban. He decreases all enemies attack related stats by 15% at the start of allies turn if the hero doesn't take damage. Now this is really really good because it's gonna sort of, he still does though. <laughs> with the exception of the ultimates as well as when he gets his attack related stats increased on the final phase but we'll go over that when we get there. Freyr of course is kind of nice he's gonna increase our all stats. He also has this chance stenciling card that's really good we're gonna have to use it on the second phase so we're gonna try to save as many of these as we can on the first phase. His ultimate is also nice. It deals double damage if you have him at 6-6. Six, six. And of course, Valentich is gonna work really well with Ban by reducing the enemy's damage they deal to us. So that's the team. Uh, I should just go over the gear real quick. Uh, attack crit, straight up defense. Uh, I do believe I have resistance rolls here, just so Ban doesn't take any damage. Now these rolls are quite high. Like you can of course go for like, I believe these were our pieces that I made into Ban's own pieces. So they turned into SR pieces because our pieces are of course really easy or really cheap to like reroll. So you can you just reroll them with gold instead of anvils and you can like easily max them out if you have a lot of gold. Freyr, I usually if I if I run this with some other team I have um, attack crit, but I usually if I run some other team I probably have like defense with either crit resistance rolls or regular resistance rolls. And of course Valenti with attack defense with the resistance sub rolls on the defense pieces. Uh, the 
artifact card set that I'm using is this one for some reason. I believe I'm using it for like the other team. I don't think the artifact card set matters at all here. You could probably go with like the demonic beast card set if you have it. The one where it just increases your basic stats or you can go with like the single target card set or anything like that. It, it, it just doesn't matter. I'm just not gonna touch this because I'm using it for the other team but that's what I'm using. So yeah, let's just get into it. So basically this is super super easy. It just takes a little bit of time. You're not dealing the most damage, so it takes a little bit of time, uh, but it's super, super safe. And the only time I've ever failed it is like I, was, I got so shafted with like king cards. Usually if you have one king card and you have at least one alt gauge orb, you can like move the card to ensure that you get his ult. That way it sort of gives you an additional turn to actually use his card. So here we're just gonna do this. And of course, we are gonna save the ca stance cancelling card here with Freyr. All other cards we can use freely. It's not that big of a deal. We can just start attacking the boss. And then perhaps uh, we should probably get the Bonds ultimate by next turn if we can. It's not that important though. Uh, the boss's ult, which he will probably get next turn or the turn after next turn, will sort of uh, break the shield. But it's not a big deal. He doesn't do a lot of damage. And he always attacks it as like the final attack in the attack chain. So I'm not honestly not gonna bother with it. I'm just gonna waste some cards like this. Next turn we'll get the silver merger there. That will of course also reset the... Uh, what's it called? The attack decrease from Ban. So it's honestly not a big deal. As you can see, King did take a little bit of damage there. Um, if you put like defense, resistance gear on him or whatever. He shouldn't take any damage. And everyone should just be patienting. Here we go, he's gonna ult, but that's totally fine. I will do this, we'll do this. And that. I'll get Valenti's ult. I do have another King card. Next time I use a King card, I will get King's ult. Usually this phase takes like four or five turns or something like that, but... It's it's not that difficult. As you can see, I'm just patiencing the boss. It's <laughs> really that simple. And here, he will just break the shield, deal a little bit of damage to all my units. Which is fine, he reset the, the thingy, but unlike the dogs, uh, it's not actually a issue here. Because with the dogs, um, they could easily like break Ban's shield. They could like, of course, deal damage to your units. You perhaps had to go with like crit resistance rather than resistance gear and stuff like that. Uh, you didn't have Valenti in that team because you had to use Donar and stuff like that. But there we go. Now we killed him. Now on this phase, he will get like three stacks of um, uh, it's like three gray buffs where you need to use stance canceling card. Uh, I do believe that they counted as like stances where he takes 20% uh, less final damage. We'll just do that, and then we will ult with King. I'll actually waste another King card there, and then we attack with Ban. Generally, you should also kind of save silver and gold cards for the next phase, uh, because the boss will get sort of a meter that, if you attack with a like bronze card, it will reduce it by 3%. It starts at like 100%, and it should go down to 0%, and then you can kill the boss. But bronze cards like remove it by 3%, silver cards remove it by 10%, and I believe gold cards remove it by 15%, is it? Something like that. Maybe even 25%, I can't remember. It's, it's, it's like something like that. Um, but here, of course, I'm just gonna attack like this. Uh, we will ult him just to remove like ult gauge rolls, so we don't have to worry about that. I'll probably merge into a Freyr ult here as well. Um, yeah, I'll use this card. If we get unlucky with king cards, I'm probably gonna have to move to get king's ult. But this phase is like the most annoying one because uh, you're hardly dealing any damage to the boss because of the damage reduction so hopefully we can get some more of these unfortunate and i would probably have to move uh, king cards or i can like chance it that i'll just use this card this card and then another two cards or whatever and hope that i get another king card because i do get a free merger here uh, I'll, i think i'll do that i'll be bold uh and we do that in case Freyr deals a lot of damage for some reason. On this phase he will also put up a stance. I do believe he puts it up this turn. I wasn't paying attention, but he puts up a stance where 
he will counter you. So basically, King will take a little bit of damage anytime he like reapplies the shield. Otherwise, if you attack him, he will patience with the counter and it's totally fine. All right, we actually got lucky with like King mergers and stuff. All right, there he, he puts it up. I'll actually do this. I will save the King silver card and we go just like this. As you, can, as you can see, King did take a little bit of damage. And the rest of the units are gonna patience because they're protected by a shield, so... Yeah, this is... This feels a little way too easy, um, but it, this team only works for floor one. Alright, we did get another stance cancelling card that can cancel the actual um, counter as well, so... That is kind of nice. Their only king did take damage from the ultimate. All the other units patience. But that's mainly because of the gear and stuff like that, so... Um, I don't know, Freyr shouldn't take too much damage. Um, but um, I actually will just cancel it. And then... Maybe I'll save the king card. Maybe I can get like a gold merger. I'll just waste these cards. I do believe ultimates also reduces the... The thingy at the end. The, uh, oh, I forgot what it's called, like an uh, immortality bar, a percentage bar. So as you can see, he gets this thing here, and you can click on it, and you can see that um, the gauge is depleted. Oh, please let me read. <laughs> the gauge is depleted when dealing pierce damage to the demonic beast. So it, using pierce damage is of course going to deplete it even further, and then also the gauge is depleted when inflicting damage on the demonic beast during your turn. So the more damage you deplete, uh, deal as well, as I believe, like, if you use silver or gold cards. Here, I'll actually just use these cards, and then we are just gonna test out how much it reduces for each ultimate, for, like, bronze cards. So there, I think, yeah, it drops by 10% for ultimates. And then bronze cards should drop it by 3%. But as you can see, you should try to not deal too much damage here, uh, as I have, because at 30% the boss will get a 100% increase to his attack-related stats, and he will start doing damage to your shield. He won't do a lot of damage, but he will still do, a, do some damage, you know. And he probably won't be able to break the, the thingy, because you're already reducing his um, attack-related stats by 75%. He will get about 15,000 attack, I believe. Something like that. It would be a lot, but here we do have a gold card. I believe that's gonna reduce it by 25%. I do believe the tactic for this is like, you, you wanna bring him down close to 30% and then within one turn, just completely kill him. Because the more HP he has, I do believe he also takes less damage. Decrease damage taken from skills by 1% for every 2% of the hero's remaining HP. By the end here, he should take a lot of damage real quickly. And yeah, we will do this. That's gonna bring it down by 25%, or at least it should. I don't know if I need to, like... an attack with a silver card as well. Just so we can see how much the silver card brings it down by. That's a gold card. 42%. Yeah, that was... I didn't pay attention. I think it was 65%, right? But basically, he gains immortality, fully depleting the gauge to remove the demonic beast's immortality effect. So he has an immortality buff, which is this one, I think. And you need to sort of remove the, the thingy to be able to kill him, so... Here, I think I can just get away with doing this. That shouldn't bring it down below that point, right? I will move like this, and I'll get Freyr's ult as well. Alright, that's perfect. Although I could show you, like, if you bring him down below that point, he's just gonna get two buffs that give him 50% attack related stats each, and he will, like, start doing damage to you. But as you can see, he's just patiencing. Yeah, just patiencing. Uh, and then we just bring him down to zero and kill him. And that's what we'll do. I can attack with these cards, no problem. There we go. And Freer's gonna kill. Actually, maybe not. Yeah, he won't. <laughs> Ban is gonna be the one that kills. Because you do need to bring this thing down to zero first and then kill him. Alright. Well, that was the team. It should help you clear this every single day. 
as many times as you want and of course every single week if you're fortunate we didn't get any of these but we did get some triangles that's kind of nice or pizza slices whatever you want to call them uh, but it should make it so that you can at least like start farming this out and once you've done this you probably can't de de uh, like deal with floor 2 I think he breaks the shield instantly yeah, so you just reset and you run this again and hope you get some of these things until they release a unit that's specific for this boss whereupon it's gonna be so much easier for you to actually start to clear it so yeah with that i think that's gonna be it um hope you found this guide helpful hope you found it useful and all that good stuff like the video if you liked it subscribe for more demonic beast and seven deadly sins content and yeah i guess that's gonna be it for me thanks for watching hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and i guess i catch you in the next one bye